So you wrote a book. Congratulations. Now what? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is book marketing expert Lindsay Tribell. It all starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and we're on UK Health Radio all weekend long. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, welcome to the interview portion of our show. And today we're going to talk about the world of book publishing, more specifically nonfiction book publishing. So I've brought in a special guest who is an expert in the area who does public relations and market coordination for one of the big nonfiction publishing houses, uh, Health Communications Inc. My guest is Lindsay Tribell. Let me tell you a little bit about Lindsay. Again, she's public relations and marketing coordinator for HCI Health Communications Inc. In that role, Lindsay plans and manages marketing and publicity campaigns for HCI books, including working with authors on social media, media coverage, author events. She's got over a decade of experience in the publishing business in the trade and educational publishing, bachelor's degree in communications and journalism minor, master of arts in teaching degree from Northeastern University. Welcome to Guys Guys Radio, Lindsay Tribell. Hi, Robert. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm, I'm delighted that you're here, and I think you can really help a lot of people who are out there. Everybody has kind of a book in them, but it's a matter of can you get that book out and what type of book is it and then how to navigate the industry. And based on my own experience, uh, you know, there's writing the book and then there's managing and understanding how the industry works. And it's very tricky sometimes. So tell us a little bit about uh, HCI. I know they do the Chicken Soup of the Soul series. Um, they're huge in the nonfiction area. You published the Joe Dispenza Evolve Your Brain book um, and just so many others. Um, tell us a little bit about your background and about HCI. Sure. Uh, so HCI Books, or also known as Health Communications Inc., is a traditional book publisher um, based out of Boca Raton, Florida. It's uh, distributed by Simon & Schuster, so it's not an imprint of Simon & Schuster. It's, it's like a distribution client. We publish about 17 titles per year. Um, most of those are in like the self-help, inspirational, and mental health area, um, you know, nonfiction books. Um, a few titles to mention that we that people might know about are A Child Called It, uh, The Adult Children of Alcoholics, and then a few new releases that um, you might have heard of, um, Heidi Across America, or the mother daughter relationship makeover. Um, we used we are the original publisher of the Chicken Soup series, al although we no longer publish that. Okay, all right. So you it's it's a big it's a big important company. Part of uh, the, it has a relationship distribution with Simon and Schuster. So you're dealing in a hot area. Is is the nonfiction and specifically self help area like re really happening right now? It seems like it. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of interest in self-help. Um, you know, self-care is a hot topic right now, especially mental health as well, um, anxiety. So we, we have a lot of books in those areas. I We do see that those are hot areas of publishing and of interest to the media and to readers. Now, how, how did you get your start in the business and why did you choose publishing? So I've always been interested in uh, book publishing. My father was actually in business, but he was also a textbook and reference book author. So I grew up around him, you know, writing these books and just always thought it was fascinating. So eventually I went to Northeastern University for college and I got a communications degree and a journalism minor. And I was able to get a position as an editorial assistant at a book publisher in Boston. And from there, I, you know, just continued to gain in industry experience. Um, you know, I have I, in marketing and publicity, and today I have about 15 years of experience in the industry. Now, in that time frame, uh, Lindsay, what have you seen uh, happening in terms of changes in the industry itself and also in the way the books are marketed? Uh, so one big thing that's changed over time is that there's a lot more books being published, and that's a result of the option of like self-publishing. So when I first started in publishing, you know, self-publishing wasn't really something that was, um, you know, talked about a lot, but there's so many more people 
um, self-publishing these days that as a result, there's a lot of traditional book publisher, pu books published, um, like the books from HCI books, um, but there's also self-publishing. So I think there's just like a, a lot more books available on the market, which makes it a lot more competitive um, for sales because there's a lot more options and it's a lot easier for an author to publish if they decide to go the self-publishing route. How about um, the hybrids now? They're, are they growing like the green leaves of the world where the author puts the, you know, gives them the book and then they you make an agreement if they want to publish it and then you have some of your own skin in the game? Yeah, so that's also another area too that's kind of arisen from like the um, self-publishing, the hybrid publisher. So as you're, as you're pointing out, there's a variety of different ways to get published now. Whereas years ago, you know, when I first started my career, you know, most of the books that were published were traditionally published. Mm -hmm. How about the marketing of the books? Has that changed with based on social media and uh, the advent of that? And uh, I think what one thing that authors don't realize is once the book is done, then the work begins, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I, I always say that and authors always say how like, you know, surprised they are that, you know, they finally get the book to the printer and, you know, they get the copy in hand, but they feel like the real work is starting because then they have to do all the marketing and publicity and get the word out because, you know, otherwise you have a book that nobody knows about if you're not promoting it. Um, but definitely marketing and publicity has changed over the years as well. Um, I would say that, you know, more of the um, focus is on, you know, book awareness and sales generated through digital discovery. So like online and social media, um, you know, and obviously, you know, authors are still doing things like, you know, interviews, like, like, you know, like this podcast. Um, we have a lot of authors that are interviewed on TV, podcasts, websites, but we also have, you know, authors who are growing social media followings and their social media influencers. And um, so I think there's just a lot more going on online. And that's really, you know, a lot of people are finding books through online avenues. How about the the book fairs? It used to be like that was it. There was a big one in New York. There's one in Frankfurt. There, there's a couple around the world. Are, do they have the same uh, importance as they did in the past? Um, so now they have, they start, Publishers Weekly started what's called the U.S. Book Show, um, which I'm actually going to next week, which I'm really okay. excited about. Um, Where is it? It's in, it's in New York City. Okay. And um, that's in, like the key event which has replaced like the book expo that used to happen in New York city. Mm -hmm. um, so that's still a prominent event. And then also the Frankfurt book fair is definitely still a prominent event. Um, there's also book fairs across the country that authors sometimes are able to get a uh, placement in. Um, as an example, we had an author who was in the uh, Texas book festival. So she was on like a panel uh, with another author that was a memoirist. Um, so there's, you know, based on where you live as an author, there might be like a local book festival, book fair type of thing that you could apply and see if they'd be interested in having you um, participate. Okay, we can, I like to circle back to the book shows. Uh, but first, I want to get into what I think is really the core of our conversation is, you know, it really takes a team to it takes a village, if you will, to publish a book, starting with the author. And we'll focus on nonfiction, because uh, if you write a fiction book, you have to write the entire book. And then you start, you send your queries out. And uh, usually what happens is you get no answer and then you get a one line rejection. That's kind of a standard line. And then you get some comments and then you get asked for a chapter and then you get asked for the whole book and then you get asked to re rewrite the whole book. And it's, it seems like this romance that keeps going back and forth. Whereas in the nonfiction, you only have to write a few chapters. So what I'd like you to do, if you can, Lindsay, is tell us about all the players that are involved in the publishing process for a nonfiction book. Who does what? The author, let's say the author has done their query type of proposal, and maybe you can talk to us about what needs to be in that proposal. What are the topics? And then uh, the headlines, and then also sample chapters, how many sample chapters, who that goes to, and then what happens once there's an agreement to publish that book. Um, so H HCI in particular, we we take submissions from authors directly from the author or through a literary agent. It depends on the publisher. Um, I know the bigger publishers only take submissions directly from a literary agent. So just, I guess, the information I'm giving you would depend on what kind mm -hmm. of publisher you're okay. working with. Um, but 
you know, the book proposal would have an overview of your book, um, your bio, it would have some information about what kind of marketing avenues you have available to help promote the book. So like if you were somebody um, like yourself that has like a social media following, like you would want to include social media numbers. Mm -hmm. um, if you've been a guest on a lot of podcasts or TV shows, you would want to include that kind of marketing information just to give the publisher an idea of, you know, if they were to publish the book, um, where, uh, you know, where, where the author could have some potential promotion. Um, also competitive titles. So like, you know, if you were writing a book on anxiety, you might find some other competitive titles that are similar and, right. and talk about how they're different. Um, so those are all things um, that would be included in a nonfiction book proposal. Also, um, you know, a table of contents and some sample content. Um, I'm not sure if there's an exact number of chapters to include, but I think it might depend on who you're submitting to, or if you were working with an agent, they would probably have some guidelines as to what to include. Um, but definitely, you know, the overview, having a clear understanding of your platform as the author, like kind of what um, what potential marketing avenues and even just marketing ideas you have for the book. Like maybe you were thinking of doing some type of creative book tour and you wanted to mention that in the book proposal. Um, so once the book proposal, um, you know, is th those are all obviously either coming directly from an author, if it, if the publishing company will accept directly from the author, if not, um, then it would come from a literary agent. And so, as I mentioned, HCI takes both direct submissions okay. and literary agent submissions. Um, but once they it got okay, oh, go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupt. Go That's ahead. That's okay. I, I was going to say that um, once it's accepted for publication. Okay. Um, then, you know, you would be assigned to an editor, um, you would, that that editor would, depending on the publishing house, it might be somebody in, internal that would do some of this work, or it might be, they might use outside freelancers. Um, but just for, as an example, like at HCI, HCI, we have two editors that work on the book. They do like developmental editing. Um, they have copy editors and proofreaders who are, you know, outside vendors that, do work on the book as well. And then um, we have an art director who makes the, uh, like the design layout. Um, so, that, you know, for just like a book that's just got text, it's pretty simple. But if you're having um, like some type of like an exercise book or something with photos or illustrations, it might be a little bit more designed. Um, so they make like a layout for the book um, and then pour the event, you know, eventually once the book's been edited and it's in good shape, they pour that content into the design layout and then, you know, work on the cover, back cover, all that, and then get it ready for the printer. And how long does that process take from a submission to um, uh, some type of decision about it, some type of response in a submission and then from when it's accepted um, to publication? So it really depends on the publisher. Um, you know, I, I know that some publishers, you know, will, a lot of publishers actually don't have the bandwidth to respond. Like I know that at HCI, you know, we have the proposals that come in. There's a disclaimer on the site that they're, unfortunately they get due to the amount of submissions, they're not able to respond to them all. Um, so, you know, I, I think it depends on the publisher. You know, some may respond, others probably don't just because of bandwidth, same thing. Um, and it really would vary. Um, you know, I know the editors that I've worked with, you know, usually if they find something that's submitted directly from an author, they pretty quickly will, you know, set up a meeting with the author or um, submit it to like our editorial team for consideration. Um, and I think the literary agents too, when they're submitting their proposals to the editors for consideration, they're expecting a quick turnaround um, so it, it depends on kind of if the author is directly submitting to a publisher or if the agent's to, uh, submitting. And I think it also depends on the publisher. Um, but, you know, it is it is really challenging, as you, you know, I know you, you know, to get traditionally published. So um, unfortunately, I know a lot of authors have, you know, submitted lots of proposals and you know, haven't heard anything and can get frustrated. And uh, what can happen is sometimes you... You know, you're working with somebody and they ask you to do changes. I had this happen to me. They asked me to write, tilt the book in a different way. I rewrote the entire book. I submitted it and then I didn't hear anything. And then I followed up and uh, 
you know, I could tell that the person who, who was had been interested had kind of moved on. And it was very, it'd be very easy for a lot of authors to get defeated by that. But you have to decide, you know, I always say, writing a book can't be something you want to do. It has to be something you have to do if, you, if you're going to succeed, because you can't, you know, it, it just ignore the nose and try to take out of the nose if there's any information they gave you that could help you improve the product. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think when when authors do get feedback, which I, I know is not very often, that that is really helpful. Um, and then they can kind of see their 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 book from like a new perspective and kind of have a new vision for it and maybe think of a new place that they could try to get it published. Um, but I agree. It, it is as an author, I could see it being really frustrating to get rejections. But unfortunately, I think that's just part of the process. Um, you know, there are I'm sure there are authors who get lucky and have things you know quickly you know fall align you know the stars align but a lot of times it's a drawn out process okay lindsay tribell my very special guest on guys guys radio we're talking about nonfiction book publishing and lindsay's giving us kind of a roadmap as to how the system works and how you can navigate it my understanding lindsay is that the proposal proposal on a nonfiction book if it's going to be a successful one, it should mirror the voice and tonality of the book itself. So in other words, you want to engage your audience. In this case, the audience is the agent or the publishing company the same way you would as your end audience, the reader. So you want to do it in a way that's not heavy handed, but you want to do it in a way that they really have a very clear idea and you're making a connection with the person you're submitting to. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's a really good point that, um, you know, you're obviously trying to, you know, sell yourself or pit pitch yourself as, you know, why they would want to work with you as an author based on some of the marketing information and, you know, why is your, why would your book potentially sell? Uh, but I do think that the, the content you do want to, you want to reach the the reader, but you also want to appeal to the editors. And I think that's what's so, so great about some of the self-help stuff that HCI does is that, you know, a lot of the topics that we're getting um, submissions on, you know, can, are things that are relatable to a lot of different people. Um, so, you know, during an editorial meeting, when we talk about the different proposals that they're, the edit, editors are considering, um, you know, the, there's, we can all kind of bring our own life experiences into thinking about whether or not we think the book would be something we'd want to get behind. Mm -hmm. So it is to be clear for our audience, the, when somebody submits um, a, a query or a proposal, if you will, for nonfiction, the person reviewing would be uh, typically an editor? Uh, so if, if How does that work? Yeah, so if you're submitting directly to a publisher, and as I mentioned, not all publishers accept direct submissions, so you have to go on their website okay. if, mm -hmm. if they do. Um, but if you're submitting directly to a publisher, um, exactly, an editor would be the one that's reviewing the, the proposals that come in and considering it. So you'd be addressing it to an editor um, yeah. or okay. an editorial team. But usually, um, you know, the publishers I've been at, we, there's like an editorial board who like needs to like talk about the uh, the book proposals that they're considering. So there is other colleagues that probably will look at the proposal as well, but essentially the editor is the one who's first deciding whether or not they want to consider it. Now, would a an agent, if you happen to connect with an agent, and uh, we should talk about that a little bit also, because there's books that have the listings of agents by genre. So you don't want to just blast your, your proposal out there to anybody, because 50% of the time you're going to be off the mark because that person is not the right, they don't represent your type of work. So first, you've got to get the right agents in a list and then start to write to them individually. And then you need to sell the agent on the on the concept and the proposal and then the agent would then contact editors they know or who would they contact exactly um so if you if you're if you're able to find a literary agent then they would have connections with the, with editors at the different publishing houses and you know based on their relationships and where they think it might be of interest they would kind of like shop it around um to find somebody that would be interested in publishing it um but definitely with the uh, the literary agents, I, I absolutely agree that it's important to really research them and figure out, you know, if they're looking for titles 
that are, you know, similar to what you've written or, you know, you don't want to send a book about anxiety to a children's book right. author that's, you know, looking for picture books. Um, so you don't want to really like take the time to, it's better to send out fewer submission uh, queries to agents and do have them be well researched and really find like who would be a good fit for your project than to kind of just blindly send them out. Um, I know that a lot of the literary agencies have submission guidelines on their websites. And then there's also this this site called Manuscript Wishlist, uh, which I don't know if you've heard of that. No, before. I have not. I'm going to write yeah, that down. Yes, so the Manuscript Wishlist has profiles for agents. That's a good place to look to. And you can kind of see what title, what kind of books they're looking for. Um, so what, so uh, resources. It's, okay. it's similar to the book that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, where they have the, the listings for the agencies, but it's like an online resource. Now, uh, in the nonfiction area, you mentioned anxiety is kind of a, a hot topic, I guess, coming uh, just the world we live in right now and coming out of everything. I, I, don't, I can make a laundry list of things that give us anxiety between the economy and the post pandemic and just everything. So, uh, and the divisiveness of our culture. What are some of the other topics that are hot for uh, nonfiction and self-help? Uh, I'd say cooking is always popular, um, like more like lifestyle. Uh, so like uh, more like personal development, more things like on success. Um, what else? Yeah, definitely like mental health, self-care. Um, everyone's interested in, you know, taking care of themselves and especially from coming from, from the pandemic and all the, the stress of that situation. Um, you know, health, self care is really important. How like was happy, happiness and emotional well being, trauma. How important is it uh, for the author to weave in some of their, I guess it depends on the type of book, but uh, their own personal story, anecdotes, life-changing lessons uh, in to kind of amp up some of the information. They might, if it's self-help, here's how you do this. How important is it, in your opinion, Lindsay, for the author to have some type of credibility there and, and maybe coming through personal experience? Great question. In my opinion, I think it's great to have, you know, the author be obviously the, you know, the expert in the area, but also to, if they do have personal experiences, they're able to weave in. I do think that that's really effective. Um, I think it allows them to reach their reader more personally. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's a lot different for someone to talk about something if they haven't, you know, experienced something versus if they've gone through something hard and they're kind of able to be vulnerable about it in the writing. Um, I've also seen a lot of authors use like case studies and different things from people they've, you know, worked with or different um, experiences they've had from, you know, outside clients and different things. It, it seems that like, you know, the whole aspect, even if it's nonfiction, and I know nonfiction is growing very quickly, um, that the storytelling aspect uh, is still important kind of like what does the main character want why can't they get it and that being the reader or the author and both of them and then helping them through storytelling technique a series of challenges and getting them to where they want to go and maybe giving them the ending that they want but not in the way they expect it weaving that through a non-fiction uh, proposal does, uh, and book does that make sense or is that too far a bridge to cross um, I mean, I think that the, the idea of storytelling as far as getting some, you know, if, if somebody's buying a self-help book and they want, they want to improve something in their life, mm -hmm. um, you know, giving them kind of like the, the tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you can weave in personal examples, I do think that's effective. Um, so I think that that would be a way, you know, kind of giving them like a roadmap, you know, through your, your self-help book. Mm -hmm. Cause obviously anybody who's buying a self-help book is, is really looking for, you know, they need help with something personally, or they're looking for guidance in an area. So they want something that's going to help whatever situation they're, they're in. Okay. Lindsay Tribell, my very special guest from HCI Books. We're talking about, you know, how to get, how to break into nonfiction book publishing. So what, for your job, what do you look at? What comes to you and what do you look at in terms of saying, Hey, I can make this work, or this is going to need this, or I don't know about this. What's, what's your process and what do you look for? 
Great. Uh, so as far as the authors that we work with, I initially am looking at like their social media platforms if they have one. Um, if I look at like previous interviews they've done, uh, if they're doing speaking engagements. Uh, in nonfiction, a lot of the authors that we end up working with will have, you know, have done speaking engagements, uh, usually on the topic or on something similar and that it can be, the book can kind of be weaved into. Um, a lot of times they've done media in the past. So I, I kind of look at the the big picture of what they've already done. Mm -hmm. um, and I call it, I call that like the, the author platform, which, you know, is kind of like a term for their platform as an author and how they can promote it on their own. Um, but I look at those things and, you know, make sure that we utilize everything that they, you know, that they have available, um, whether it's, you know, making sure that the book's in integrated into their speaking gigs, um, that it's integrated into any type of interviews they're going to be doing, um, if they have social media or, or you know, if they don't have social media, helping them kind of grow this, grow some social media, or um, if they do have it, you know, integrating book content into the social media. Um, so those are, the, those are some areas that I think are really important. Also, um, a lot of times authors will have some personal connections that help to get testimonials for the book. Um, so a lot of times on a book, you'll see on the, either like on the back cover or on the Amazon page or, um, you know, wherever the um, book publishers page or Barnes and Noble page, um, you'll see like quotes from, you know, other authors or other influential people um, so those are uh, those are like testimonials that the author was able to get um, as a result of uh, having like a personal connection usually. And those are things that we look at too is you know if they have any good connections that they can get blurbs for the book. We call them okay. blurbs. Now does, does the publishing company that's a that's a great point. So uh, actually you said something else about um, that comes to mind. For instance, um, let me articulate this the right way. So if somebody's writing a blog about cooking Greek food and then they decide to make a book about it. That's a good thing because they've already started to lay the foundation for their author platform and their audience, correct? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Okay, and I lost my place there. Then we were talking about, um, help me out here. I'm sorry, I never do this. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> You were asking me kind of like what I look for as far as when the book, you know, when the authors start working with me, like what I'm looking for. The 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 marketing part, throwing it at the author, what do they need to do to sell the book? How how important is that for, for the author? Because a lot of the authors feel that the work is done. They submit the book and they're like, go do it. Who goes and gets those blurbs for them? I know if they have personal like like for me, if I did a book, I can get lots of blurbs because of all my guests. But for the lay person, how do they get blurbs? And does the publishing company help them with that? So I think that that would that's a good question. It would depend on the publisher. Um, I can only speak to HCI's process because I, you know, obviously I, I don't work with other publishers. But at HCI, the authors are are in charge of getting the blurbs. Um, occasionally, if um, maybe the editor will be able to get another blurb for them. Um, but in, at HCI, the authors are, that's something that they do. I, I can't speak for other publishers though, obviously, because okay. they probably have different processes or- Can, the, ag can the agents help with that? Mm -hmm. Yep, I've had agents get blurbs for a book as well. And then, so basically what, what does the publishing company get, give the author besides the distribution? Do they put any skin in the game? Do they do they have a, like a promotional uh, budget? Because it's, it seems like, and take this the right way, that the author writes the book, the, the publishing company makes a, most of the money on it. The author is asked to promote the book. It's basically what the book is and how are you gonna sell it? What tools uh, do, does the publishing company like yours bring to the table to help that author sell their book? And so everybody wins. So, and this is another question that, you know, it really depends on the book publisher. So I can only speak to what HCI does, um, but, you know, at HCI, we do have, you know, I'm the marketing and publicity coordinator so that you do get support for, um, you know, for that, for those kinds of activities. I'll, we'll arrange author interviews. Um, we run ads, like digital ads. Um, we 
help with uh, provide like flyers and like some social media tools. Um, I work with the authors on like their speaking engagements and different things like that. So um, that's those are things that we do at HCI. Um, but, you know, depending on where you're publishing, um, they might have like a large budget or they might not have any budget at all. Um, they might have a whole team of marketing and publicity um, I guess it, I guess it depend, might, depends um, on the opportunity. Um, so because everybody has this thing, oh, I write my book, it's getting published. I'm going on a book tour around the country, signing at, bo at bookstores. And that's not necessarily the case. That's rare, actually, unless it's your local bookstore. Yeah, we, we don't tour the authors. Um, we have, I do set up a lot of author events in local places. So like, as an example, um, I have an author who's doing an event in Portland soon. And, you know, it's, so those are kinds of things that happen or if the author is traveling already. Mm -hmm. um, I had an author who was doing a lot of travel for speaking. So I was able to reach out to like bookstores in the area and get her a lot of bookstore events, which was great, but you know, like HCI wouldn't actually like, you know, pay for a tour for the author. Do you work with, um, nowadays, some, some, there's some companies that do this where the book is released kind of online, like a chapter, and then you can pay for it. And ultimately you end up buying the book online and you get a physical copy and it helps pay for the production of the book. What's your thoughts on that? Um, so we, I guess we don't, we don't do, can you tell me about that one more it's time? It's like you're building a website. You have a website devoted to the launch of a new book and you you leak out chapter by chapter, people sign up and then maybe they, you know, take a oh, subscription okay. and then ultimately they paid for the book and then they get a copy of the physical book when it's done. Oh, okay. Um, we haven't had any authors do that. We do have authors that will post a sample chapter of the book um, on their website or they'll use it as kind of like a, a lead gate on their website um, to get you know, an email sign up and then they'll send the sample chapter in hopes that somebody will buy the actual book. Um, but we haven't had anyone do that, but I'll have to take a look at that. That's interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a different model. I've, I've read about it. Um, I don't know if it, how well it works, but I guess it could if it's done the right way. So uh, what can an author do to be a good client, if you will, for the publishing company and to work with somebody like you? What are you looking for in the author to say, I, you know, this guy's playing ball or wow, what a disaster. I mean, I think the biggest thing is collaboration for me. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoy working with authors and I think that I, I work really well with them and they work, you know, I've had really great experiences with authors collaborating um, for like the same goal. So, you know, being, um, you know, able available for anything that HCI can work, you know, can put, come, you know, put together or also, you know, me helping them with their uh, marketing platform and getting all the different things going that they're working on. So I think just collaboration is mm -hmm. really helpful. In how, the how, that way. Go ahead. Um, how about publicists? Um, do you, does your company provide the publicists or do you recommend that an author hire an outside publicist? So at HCI, I, um, I do, I do do publicity. So I'll set up interviews. Um, we'll bring on some additional PR support. Um, we do have some authors that do hire their own outside publicists and that actually happens pretty frequently. Um, so I have kind of all, all those scenarios. Um, what, what so do you think of that? What, is that a good idea? I mean, I think it depends on the book and the author's goal. Um, I think that, you know, we've had authors that have really had great success with it and others that were kind of disappointed by the results. Um, I, I think the the one thing about publicity is that there's no guarantees that, you know, you, you'll get coverage for your book. So I think if you're going to hire an outside publicist, you have to kind of realize that there's no, you know, just because you're hiring someone doesn't mean that you'll get the results you're hoping for. <laughs> um, but, um, but, you know, I, I have authors who who do bring them on. I have others that don't. Um, and, you know, we, we provide a lot of PR support regardless of whether or not they bring on an outside publicist. And that's another thing that would, you know, vary at every publisher. Um, you know, there's probably publishers that don't bring on outside publicists at all, whereas there's others that probably primarily do. So it really depends on the publisher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the process then, um, 
what are the expectations that, that you have when you get a proposal? Uh, when, let me put it this way. You get a proposal, it's accepted by the publishing company. What's the first thing you do? So the first thing I do is I set up an introductory call with the author to kind of go over publicity and marketing. I give them an overview to see if they have any initial questions. Uh, we also have the authors complete a questionnaire, uh, which is really helpful because it gives us an idea of some, you know, their vision for the book, if they have any speaking engagements that are coming up, um, any, you know, kind of their wish list for, you know, who they'd like to us to reach out to for media. Um, so we have them do the questionnaire. I do a meeting with them, um, just go, you know, do the overview, answer any questions they have. And then that kind of kicks off the, the relationship between um, me and the author. Okay. Uh, what are some of the uh, mistakes, the, the usual, predictable, common mistakes that authors make during the process? Um, that can be rectified. And what's your, what's your solution? Uh, I'd say that I've I've had some authors that try to do too much. Um, so like, especially with like social media, social media can be really time consuming. Um, so I've had some authors that, you know, don't really have too many social media outlets established and, you know, try to do almost like too much and then kind of burn out and um, end up kind of just letting them sit and, you know, not be active. So I think in that kind of a scenario, I think it's, I always advise if, if an author doesn't have social media already to maybe just pick like one or two platforms where you really think your audience would be and then focus on those platforms. Um, and that way it's less of a, um, less of a time commitment because um, I think people, I, I'm sure you know from doing the podcast mm -hmm. and uh, all your social media and everything that it, do, it does, you know, it's a time consuming activity. And I, I think, it's people who are new to that sometimes don't realize that and some of them don't like it you know some people particularly authors like they don't even want to be on Facebook uh, I mean some do but others like they just here's the book that's it right uh yeah we we have we've had some authors that are not really interested in doing social media um quite a few of the HCI authors do like to use social media at least like one platform um and we have we have had quite a few authors that have multiple platforms that they're updating regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so what know. would you suggest then? So if somebody's gonna do social media, let's say it's a cookbook, where would you put them? So, uh, so I would look at their topics, like for example, like cooking, you know, I would look at the different platforms and try to figure out where are the most of the, the people who are interested in cooking. Mm -hmm. um, to me, cooking is very visual. So I would just immediately think like TikTok or um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I would, you know, look at your topic, try to figure out where your audience is, and then, you know, pick those one or two platforms and then just focus on building those so it's not doesn't become such an overwhelming task. So it would be uh, the author would then build a specific um, names uh, part of like, let's say they're on Instagram, they'd have a, a different identity, or it would be just themselves. Let's say they have their own personal page, they're going to do something new, it's about cooking. Should they have a separate page for that or should it be all part of them? I guess it depends if they are part of the brand or not. Yeah, um, I would recommend if you already have something established to use that because it's so hard to build a following to then not use your pre-established accounts is, as long as it's relevant and makes sense for your branding. Um, I think it, it, it would be, you know, it would be not great to kind of desert that and start something new. Um, but I think it depends on your content. You want to make sure, obviously, it's relevant to your existing accounts. Um, I have had a lot of authors use their name as the, you know, the handle um, or like, you know, their name and author. Um, I have a lot of authors that are doing that and kind of building their own like brand and persona on social media. And what yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. OK, what's the favorite? What's your favorite part of your job, Lindsay? Uh, I really love working in, in book publishing because I'm always learning about new things. Um, also, yeah, from working with the authors, you know, they're obviously all uh, passionate about their their subjects. So I'm, you know, it's, it's nice to work with, you know, everyone who's enthusiastic. And I like that I'm helping them get their knowledge to readers. Mm -hmm. and have you considered uh, a book of your own? Maybe about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I... I 
I know I have I haven't written a book, but yeah, maybe I'll I'll come up with a, a book publishing book. That's a good idea. Or, <laughs> I've always been kind of intrigued. I have a dog, and I've always been thought it'd be fun to write a book about my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So what's the best advice you could give to everybody out there who has a, a nonfiction book idea in mind? Um, so I would, you know, look at kind of assess your current author platform. So, you know, looking at, you know, are, are you on social media? Are you doing any type of speaking engagements? Um, have you been interviewed for podcasts in different places, you know, media? And, um, you know, look, look to grow that. And I, if you're trying to find a traditional publisher by growing those you know, your platform in those areas, I think it makes you more attractive to a traditional publisher. And if for some reason you can't find a traditional publisher, because obviously it is really competitive, you still have those avenues for if you were to self-publish, um, you know, you could still use them for marketing. So it's, you know, time well spent. How, how does that work, that last point you made? So if you, you're not with a traditional publisher, how do you, you, you what avenues are you referring to? Um, so if you're not with a traditional publisher, but if you have like, um, let's just say you self-published, but you had like your own social media okay. and you had like some connections to media or podcasters, you know, you could do some of that outreach yourself and um, do the promoting yourself, um, even though like you're obviously you're, you're self-published. Um, so you're not working with a traditional publisher to help you, but you could do a lot of those things on your own. Got it. Best advice for our uh, authors out there? Uh, my best advice is to, uh, you know, find something you really love that you want to write about, especially in nonfiction. Find something that's unique, maybe a unique take on your topic and um, not give up. I love it. I love it. So thank you so much, Lindsay. Tell us where people can find more about you and HCI Books and anything else you want to tell us about HCI. Sure. Uh, the HCI Books website is HCIBooks dot com. Um, we're also on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, so you can find us in those places as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for helping our audience, helping me, and uh, for a very interesting interview and Guys Guys Radio. Thank, thank you, you, Lindsay. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. If you enjoy the guests and content I bring you each and every week to Guys Guys TV and Guys Guys Radio, Please support us by subscribing to our channels and platforms. Thank you.